been too much work done on that. But I'll come to my own experience in time, and that's certainly what I've found. People who really have been chronically fatigued, suffering from all sorts of illnesses, undoubtedly have felt astonishingly better. Maybe it's a placebo effect, I accept that possibility. But my goodness me, the improvement is, is real, as far as they're concerned. And that really is what matters to me and to them. There was a study done at the Mayo Clinic in Rochester, America. In the emergency room they found that of something like 400 patients who presented there with rather vague symptoms, not a pain in the tummy, which is something straightforward, but with sort of muscle aches and chronic fatigue, of whom many of them had been diagnosed with ME syndrome or with fibromyalgia or with, uh, um, I suppose, uh, yeah, just chronic fatigue syndrome or depression, simple depression. They found astonishingly, and I mean, I've read the original article as well now. I didn't just sort of read it in Michael Hollick's thing, but I've actually checked, and yes, it's true. They found that 93% of those people were vitamin D deficient. Well, how many people do you know, to say nothing of which, how many of you who are reading this, if anyone's reading it at all, um, how many of those people have had a vitamin D level checked? I would guess nobody. I've certainly never had mine checked. Have you? I bet you haven't. Even in osteoporosis clinics, it seems to me, I get lots of letters from specialists. So, I sat and read it, and it happened that I was organising at the time some postgraduate lectures, and one of the speakers didn't turn up, and clearly you have to have a plan B. And as it happens, I'd read the article, I think, the week or two weeks before, and so I thought, well, I'd better fill in. Somebody needed to fill the gap, otherwise everyone would have gone home. And I got up and I talked about vitamin D. And uh, I must say, the figures are sensational. This is to a group of doctors and specialists, ordinary doctors, GPs, everybody. One dermatologist sitting near the front really sort of encouraged me enormously because I could see he was practically ticking off as I went along. All the things that I was talking about, it was sort of validating it. I, I knew that I was hitting the button. I knew that he was, broadly speaking, agreeing with everything I'd said. He was sort of noticeably nodding his head, and his smile was growing wider as we went on. And I thought, well, that's good. Now what do I do about that? To begin with, I didn't do much. After a while, I did start checking a few vitamin D levels. They were all low. The normal level for vitamin D is supposed to be 75 to 200 international units. I was getting back figures of maybe 35 at the top, <laughs> and the lowest I got was 17. Perhaps I was being a bit selective in the patients I was looking at, but I was absolutely staggered. I mean, it's one thing to read an article and you think, well, this doesn't really apply to me. And it's another to suddenly find that actually it does apply to you and it does affect your patients. I don't know just how much it affects my patients. I wonder how many cases of heart disease we might spare. I don't know. I can't tell you. It is certainly a funny thing that people living around the Mediterranean basin, about whom we've always imagined it was the Mediterranean diet that was prolonging their lives, but maybe it isn't. Maybe what's prolonging their lives is they've got tons of sunshine and tons of vitamin D. It's just as likely. The Mediterranean diet never really convinced me, I've got to say. So who knows? Okay, so now I know the disease exists. I know that it's common. I know that it affects people that I know and patients that I have. So what next? What do you tell people to do? Take supplements? Well, actually, it's very difficult to get the right sort of supplements, as I think I mentioned. You need at least a 1,000 units a day. You don't need more. It's no good having too much vitamin D. So a 1,000 units a day is fine. I'm not sure whether I told you already in this talk that the Canadian government 
within the last three months, has decided to advise all Canadians, men and women, over the age of 50 automatically to take vitamin D supplements, 1,000 international units a day. Well, I think they must know what they're talking about. They're pretty healthy in Canada. They have actually a fine record of longevity and good health. One of the healthiest people in the world. Same, I suppose, up to a point with the Australians. They also get plenty of sunshine, don't they? Anyhow, sunshine by itself may not always be enough, as I've pointed out. Somehow this didn't really seem to me to be enough. I mean, obviously, telling people to take supplements and let them wander off is not really a very good way to treat people. Surely you need to have them back and check whether it's recurring, whether, it, whether you've corrected the deficiency. This is all, from my point of view, very much in the early steps, early stages. And I haven't really read any articles on outcome, because outcome is really what matters to us. It's all very well having these lovely theories, but if you actually do replace it, or if you do give people injections, I told you before just how much salmon you'd need to eat to sort of get anywhere near to sort of even 15 minutes in the sun, if you've got somebody with vitamin D levels below 20, that's severe, however you look at it. You can use injections. Injections of vitamin D, 600,000 units in one shot. Well, wow, that's a lot more than 3,000 from 10 minutes in the sun. And it really makes smoked mackerel look pretty small at about 100 units um, an ounce or whatever it might be. 200 pounds. Take you an awful lot of smoke mackerel to get anywhere to that. And unless you like kippers, um, it's really very difficult to eat a lot of smoky fish. You know, a lot of salt, um, a lot of um, fatty fish. I mean, it's not easy to eat. Um, <clears throat> so that's really where it stands at the moment. I would say that in the last two and a half years, there has been an increased awareness. I now see quite regularly, newspaper articles about vitamin D deficiency. I think things are beginning to catch on. But even now, very few doctors are doing tests. And I think that if somebody does tell you that you're vitamin D deficient, or if you think you might be, the first thing is to go and ask your doctor to test for it. I see no reason why they shouldn't. The test only costs about 40 or 50 pounds, which in medical terms is not a fortune. And if you seriously think that you might suffer from vitamin D deficiency, see your doctor and get a test done. And if you find that you are suffering from it, then you will need treatment. And you will need treatment with adequate amounts of vitamin D. And you will also need follow-up. It can all be arranged quite easily by your local GP, I would say. But I think that this is something we need to take seriously. And what can one say, really? Let the sun shine out.